Okay, today's date is April 2nd, 2014. The time is approximately 1032 hours. I'm Detective Jason Morales, the Albuquerque Police Department. And I'm here in reference to case number 14-023683. An incident that occurred earlier this year. And I'm here speaking to you. Can you state your first and last name? Sure, my name is Kevin Fuller. And your work address? 400 Willa. And your date of birth? 61769. And a work number you can get all of you at 241-4824. And Kevin, just before I turn the recorder on, just kind of explain to you what we want, the type of information that we're looking for, and just an explanation as far as um, some transcripts that were given to the homicide unit in reference to some in reference to an officer-involved shooting, and then specifically um, officers that were at the scene and their lapel cameras and what they're seeing and heard. So can you just kind of tell me how this all came about? Sure. We start from the beginning. Give me as much detail as possible, and then okay. I'll try to ask you some questions. May I refer to uh, my calendar side of the date? Sure. Okay. All right. So um, originally, I was told on, uh, let's see here, I want to get the date right. It was Friday, March 28th, I believe, and um, I was told on that date. Uh, to work with Detective Ms. Sanders to obtain the lapel camera videos from the incident in the foothills that I believe occurred March, in the, the end of March, in the foothills. So um, my directive came from T.J. Willem, my boss, and I was told to uh, take all of those videos and put them on a Dropbox a Dropbox folder and uh, make them shareable only to TJ uh, for the purpose uh, of sharing them with the media or anybody else that the chief wanted to share them with eventually. So they were going to be released in the future. But uh, So on that Friday, what I did was, you know, I took my order from TJ and he said that was an order from the chief. And I, so I copied the uh, folders I received from uh, the evidence area on the Dropbox folder and gave the hard drive, the original hard drive, back to the detective so he could sign it back to the original location where he obtained it. Uh, so I uh, copied that over to the Dropbox folder, uh, created a uh, private link that was shareable, and I emailed it to um, TJ Willem and uh, uh, Tasia Martinez to make sure that they had that to do what they wanted. So several days went by, and the following Thursday, um, I was told by TJ as well um, a couple of things, I think. Um, I can't remember that. I'm trying to make sure that was the right day. So I had a couple different directors from TJ that, well, that Thursday. So the following Thursday, which was, um, I'm trying to make sure I have the date, right? Um, so the following Thursday was the... Just what I heard as I walked out the door that that's I, I apologize. The, the first, it was the 21st, first was the first time that I asked you. I'm sorry about that. The 21st was when I first took, um, copied the video of the Dropbox. I got those dates wrong. So it was about the March 16th incident. The, 20, the following Thursday, which is the 27th, um, I received more directive from TJ. And uh, he had a number of us stay late and after work. And my um, instructions were to coordinate with uh, a number of people to help split up those videos and to look at each video and to write down anything that uh, would be important to for the chief to know about before they release these videos. So um, I worked with um, people that Thursday night. Um, it was uh, Sarah Masick, Nick Sanders, Philip Garcia, Crystal Quintana, and I stayed you know, late Thursday going through and making as much progress as we could on um, those videos. And so the uh, paper I have is where I got in from start to finish that day. So we uh, broke down different videos, took different uh, lapel videos from different officers there in the scene and just watched you know, each as much as we could and wrote down notes. Um, and uh, I was also to, to, told to take out the videos or mark the videos that actually had the, um, the incident of the shooting. Um, that and and, 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 and it does aside to make sure that we, we knew which lapel camera videos you know, captured that, that moment as well. So, um, you know, I you know, worked with them. People got tired around 9. They'd been there, you know, since 7 in the morning, and we left Thursday night. Friday morning, I was told to take those videos and put them on another hard drive. I'm teaching a call today. 
understood he was in a meeting with the mayor and the chief and possibly had a lot of materials, but he said that the, the mayor and the chief wanted those videos put on hard drive and delivered to uh, an investigator at the, the FBI field office here in Albuquerque. So he gave me um, the uh, name of the person um, and the address uh, of the field office and told me to go to property, get a hard drive, put those videos on the hard drive and deliver them to the FBI, which I did. Um, and that was on a Friday. Uh, the next day. That evening, um, Commander Montano called me, uh, said he was from, he was on, you know, in the chief's office, and he uh, asked me you know, about you know, delivering that uh, hard drive to the FBI. I told him, you know, that uh, that was an order from, from PJ, and I assumed that, you know, that the chief and the mayor were, you know, involved in that, and I was walking through the process in terms of what I did. He told me at that time that um, he wanted to talk to me about uh, some concerns he had in terms of change of custody, and he asked me to cease and desist looking at the video and working on that, which then I communicated with, with my group. Um, and then earlier this week, uh, I think it was Monday, he came in, and I gave him all of these physical copies, handed them back to the cell phone drive, and uh, he asked me to delete those videos from the Dropbox folder, which I did. Okay. And then now we're here today. Yes. Okay. Okay, so let me go back and make sure I understand all of this real quick. Okay. So let me just start off first okay, of all. So um, who are you employed by? I'm employed by the Albuquerque Police Department or City of Albuquerque. And what is your job title? I am the APD um, Video Unit Supervisor in the Rural Center. Is and how long have you been employed by uh, the Albuquerque Police Department? A year and a handful of days. I started uh, last March 25th, 2013. Right okay. And what are your, can you just kind of give me a brief overview of what your duties are as a video unit supervisor? I supervise one employee, and the two of us work together to uh, write, produce, and distribute the Daily 49 officers. We also provide other type of video um, requests as needed in terms of uh, providing training videos, filming uh, APD-related events. Um, we uh, go out and you know, we film things like promotions, employees in the line of uh, do ride-alongs and get video for our news broadcasts, and that's our primary responsibilities. Other responsibilities would include assisting detectives as they need in terms of surveillance video. Oftentimes, um, they can't access or share that video uh, for public release, so we work with uh, armed robbery credit kids, uh, burglary detectives, other, and many officers that really has trouble um, watching uh, video that they can't see without uh, particular um, uh, video codecs. So we, we assist them and provide them with what they need as needed. Um, and then we're in charge of the, you know, the spedentics boxes that help uh, distribute the video throughout uh, APD and miscellaneous other things that come up with Okay. So back on March 21st, um, Detective Nick Sanders had contacted you and he asked you for your assistance in reference looking at the videos. Um, I, I think that, that that request originally came from T.J. Willem and then Nick Sanders um, helped with the chain of custody. So he, does that make sense? So he, uh, I, just, you know, I was told So it came from T.J. to Nick and then from Nick to you. Yes. But Nick's uh, the one that actually got the videos from evidence. An officer brought it down from evidence, or I might be wrong about them, whoever the, the video originated from, an officer delivered it to the RTCC, handed it to Nick, Nick appeared to sign off on it, and then he told me to copy the hard drive from the hard drive to our local computer, and then I gave the hard drive back to him. And he, from what I know, said he was going to return it to where it should go. Okay. So when... Do you know who the officer was that gave that to Nick? I do not. Okay. But does he work up in RTCC? No, uh, I believe they sent him from the crime lab, um, but I don't know okay. who delivered it. Okay, no problem. It should be in chain of custody, but I'm not sure who it is right Okay, so he brings it, he gives it to Nick. In turn, Nick gives it to you, gives you the hard drive, and he tells you, whatever's on this hard drive, I need you to put that where? I put the um, initially on a Dropbox folder, and uh, I just named it the officer involved shooting and a date. Okay, and put all of the files in there. And I know this is going to sound like a stupid question, mm -hmm. but I still have to ask. No. So I'm assuming when you moved everything from there, you made copies of it and moved whatever is on that hard drive and a copy of that onto those drop boxes. Yes. And then whatever is originally still on that hard drive was still there. Correct. Okay. And I handed that original hard drive back to Nick. And, and then he did whatever. Yes. Okay. So then 
um, after you create that, one of the directives you are given is once you have those videos, that you were to make it so that you could share that with TJ. Right. Um, was there anybody else that you were to share it with? Um, I gave the original shareable link uh, to TJ Invitation via email. Okay. Um, and what's that allow them to do? That allows them, if they choose to share that um, with anybody they chose to share with, and I think they've used that process before with sharing information, you know, to the public, whether it be, you know, surround studio or library video. Um, that's just an easy way for them to be able to share things. Okay, so at that time, the only people that would have had access to what you download or what you copy from the hard drive to the Dropboxes would have been Tasia and TJ, and they have access to it so they could share it with anybody unbeknownst to you. Theoretically, yes, but I don't know what happened after I gave them the Well, I know, but I mean, yes. they, they have, they have, have access to the ability to share, share it with okay. they want to. Um, other people that had access to it are the people in the RTC that have access to that Dropbox, Dropbox chain folder. I mean, um, it's very unlikely that people will go down and just open it up and look at it, um, but we use that as a way to, you know, when we had the group of people, everybody was going into the same folder, so we didn't make more copies than one, right. so everybody was going into the same folder, but theoretically anybody with access to that Dropbox uh, chain could have, you know, gotten in there. Okay. So then once you did that, you made it shareable, then that was all you did pretty much from that, from that day. Yes, that day. exactly. And then the following Thursday, which would have been the 27th of March, mm -hmm. um, that's when you're actually asked, uh, you and other employees up at RTCC, um, were asked to uh, start looking at the videos and um, document anything that might be important that the chief would want to know. And my, my directive included doing that before the end of the day on Thursday. Um, I got as much help as I could, but mathematically, you know, there was... Hours you know, of video to watch. Forty plus hours of video to watch, and it just couldn't happen. Okay. So we did the best we could. Um, decided, and TJ gave us permission to break and come back and look at the video on Friday. Okay. So from TJ, what was TJ's directive to you? I know not yep. verbatim, but what did he tell you? Did he give you any direction as far as what you should write down, what you should look for, or was that kind of just whoever looked at it, whatever they felt their opinion was? Um. He, his directive to me and everybody else that was there was that we need to look at every frame of every video to make sure there's nothing that um, is going to be a problem you know, in the future if this was released to the to media or anybody else that we're going to release it to. So our directive was to go through, look at every frame, and write down anything that was out of the ordinary or um, denote just inter interactions between you know officers, the suspect, and, and, officer, and you know, just to, to know anything that we thought was you know, either interesting or important or might flag. Uh, you know, so something. knowing that, what would what do you think you're looking for? And I know, uh, I know, yeah, but you know, <laughs> you know, I, I think yeah. that uh, what I so assumed we were looking for. Um, okay. And, then we'll and maybe I made assumptions, but my assumption is that when they wanted to look at. That somebody, whether it be the chief TJ or other, that they wanted to make sure that there was nothing that was going to surprise them after they released this video. Because the bulk of the video is somebody standing behind a rock with a radio chatter, you know, or somebody standing with a dog and having the dog yelp for eight hours ago. So it was a lot of boring video. And I think that my art director was to identify anything that, that, that people may not have seen that might cause them an issue. Um, if the video was released. Okay. Okay. And did he define what the, what an issue would be? Um, I don't think he left it to the person. I think he left it to the person to um, interpret okay. so if, if this becomes a media problem or it. an issue okay. that the media is going to know about it so he can let like, yeah. other people make okay. those decisions. What do you think would be a media problem? Right. Right. So I'm just trying to be, you know, this is again my opinion. I know. I know. Um, I'm, a former, I'm a former journalist. I know what I would do as a journalist with that video, and so any problems I was looking for would be um, interactions between officers that uh, that were expressing their own opinion about what was happening. Um, you know, mostly that's what I was looking for. Anything that I would use as a journalist to say, here's a story related to the incident in the foothills that maybe portrayed a video in a negative way, that might have been unfair or... I was looking for instances like that. Okay. And then when uh, this directive came down from uh, 
TJ, uh, whereas everybody that was going to help you um, as far as viewing these, looking at the videos, making any notations about anything, um, whereas everybody there at the same time and giving the same direction? Or was it just individual? He went and told you, and he went and told the next person. Everybody was in the studio at the same time, uh, except for Sarah. Uh, Sarah was, I believe, uh, briefed by TJ. Afterwards, um, they, they thought Sarah was gone because it was at 6 the day, and then Sarah had to be in the back. So he yeah. caught, her, caught her up and told her what he wanted. Okay. And, and then, you know, laying down the street doesn't do you any good either. Obviously, I'm not going to, I mean, what you wrote in here is what you wrote in here, so I'm not going to go over the specifics, but just to um, clarify, the ones that you told me that you viewed and made notations on is uh, Kenneth Ronzones, John Hill, and Brock Knappert. Yes. And those are the only three that you looked at. Okay. Not sure. Um, I, those are the only ones that I looked at and made notations on. Um, but my initial director from TJ, just for myself, was to go through every one of those video clips and fast forward to where the incident would be and notate anything I saw to capture the incident, either on audio or on video. Okay, and so, so I, I, before the directive was to everybody work together to look at every frame, I at least opened every video um, to, to skim through till the point where the incident happens. And so is it fair to say that all the videos that you looked at that were on that hard drive that were downloaded to the, um, the file and then that was put onto the share, you've seen, not necessarily in their entirety, but you've seen at least all those videos to see if, because that's what you're probably, looking for. I probably opened every one okay. uh, just to make sure. And I didn't, you know, view every one. The only ones I viewed are the ones I documented here. Okay. We just mentioned, but I probably opened mm -hmm. and looked for a particular incident as I was instructed to do. Okay. And then did TJ tell you where that instruction was coming from? That why why all this? Why was everybody to look at this? Um, I don't believe it. I don't remember specifically why. I just assumed that um, the chief wants this done. I mean, that was mentioned several times, so I assumed that was directed from the chief. As in, TJ said the chief wanted it done? Yes. Okay. Um, and I don't believe any of us ever took that as anything other than an order from the chief, and that was what we were all okay. trying to accomplish. So then that was on Thursday. You guys worked and did as much work as you could. Everybody's tired, and then you ended up stopping, and then you picked it up again right. on Friday. I mean, I, the I, picked, yeah, I picked it up again in the morning. I started to do some work, and then I got a call from TJ saying that I had to take the hard drive to FBI, and at that point, uh, we had stopped. Um, well, but you're talking about a separate uh, separate hard drive. Yes, exactly. the one that right. So the original one's already gone. The original so you gone. You're making a new one, right, and I'm you're putting all those videos that you originally copied. On um, a new hard drive, drive. Exactly. and then you took that to the FBI. Right. And you took that personally to the FBI. I did. And did you have anybody sign for anything? Um, I gave it to the um, the uh, they, security let me in, and I talked to the person who was behind the desk, and uh, they had me sign a green sheet of paper with my name and where I was from, but uh, uh, they said they would get back to me. So I didn't give it to the investigator there. You gave it to the person that's working behind that window? Yes, that's exactly. We found the last window. Okay. And when you went over there, uh, did you have a name or somebody that that was to go to? Carol Lee, I believe. I can double check that, but I believe it was Carol Lee. I have it written down to make sure, but um, I just remember I just tied it in with Christopher Lee, the old vampire actor. <laughs> I remember Carol. <laughs> okay. so. And so then you took the hard drive the one that you created mm -hmm. with the videos over the FBI, dropped that off, and then that's still on the Friday the 28th. Right. And then that was also the same day that Commander Montano contacted you. Right. And, then, and did he contact you or did he contact TJ? Um, well, I came back Friday probably, this was just before lunch, so I came back at lunch. Um, and then because of the anonymous threat and the protesting coming up, I was diverted into preparing for other things. And so... Um, you know, I was told initially the plan I was going to come in and work at the weekend on those videos. And once, I, and so around six o'clock, possibly in that time frame on that Friday, I received a call when I was out to dinner uh, from Commander Montano, and he explained to me that uh, he had some concerns about the chain of custody and that I should, uh, you know, cease and desist. And so I, I told, I texted TJ that after that conversation, and he said that he had heard from Commander Montano, and he said that you know to follow his directions and to not. Continue with the video until further notice. Okay. So that was the last time I went in and looked and, and even opened them. Was he talking? 
what was he talking specifically about as far as the chain of custody of what? Uh, Commander Montagna was, was talking about the chain of custody. Um, and again, it was, it was in a restaurant and it was loud. Um, um, he, he was, he, I interpreted it to be that he, had some, that he or the chief or somebody had some concerns about who would view the video and that they were going to look into it and I should not continue with documenting the video or viewing it anymore. And that he would get back to me. Monday morning, first thing he came in, showed me, um, asked for asked for these papers, and asked me to delete the video from the Dropbox, which I did. Okay. So then, the the printouts that we're looking at, which are the notations that you made mm -hmm. from the videos that you watched, uh, is this the only? Is this saved somewhere? Oh, like um, uh, mine is saved, and you know I just. And um, I can either give you the file or delete it or whatever you want to do. The rest of the people printed them out for me. Um, I don't know. I originally asked them to send them to me electronically so I can collate them all and give it to TJ. Um, but they printed it out and then handed it to me. But um, by the time you know I was going to ask them for electronic versions, I was told to stop working on the project, so I didn't pursue that. Okay. Um, so they, they, they may or may not have that saved. But as far as yours is saved? Mine is saved. Okay. And just to be clear, when um, Commander Montagna contacted you on that Friday night at 6 when you were out to dinner and told, hey, we just have some concerns, we mm -hmm. just need to stop this all together, you contact TJ, he said essentially the same thing, mm -hmm. um, and Commander Montagna told you that he wanted you to delete um, those files from the folder that you ran on the assuming yes. we're talking about the files as being the videos. Right. Things. Um, was that done? Um, I handed him okay. these copies on Monday morning, and I clarified with TJ that, that he wanted me to delete the Dropbox folder files. And I believe I didn't get to doing that until Tuesday afternoon, yesterday afternoon, sometime between two and four, just because of all the I was we're going through protest videos. We had people here into the night all weekend long, and then um, on Monday we're still dealing with potential protests for staying here late Monday night, So, um, and we still had 49s to do. We had an event last night for the um, um, uh, Child Abuse Prevention Panel, so I was still doing videos for them, and I'm just going down my list, so I deleted it yesterday afternoon between 2 and 4, which was Tuesday, okay. the first. So the videos are no longer anywhere here? No, I only made one copy of the videos and I put them on the Dropbox and I deleted them from the Dropbox. Okay. And then from the Dropbox, though, even though if TJ or Tasia had access to it, they had, had to, their access is only granted, so now their access is gone, too. Yeah, they the would have the link, but the link would go nowhere, so the link would be broken. So they don't have it either? No. Okay. And then um, yours is on here. Um, the others printed that are out, so you don't know about theirs. I don't know which ones were which. And... Um, I may have another paper that um, identified. I, I took a screenshot of the file directory and I just put arrows and assigned officers' names to them. So no. I, I, I thought I handed that to Commander Montani, but if not, I'll check my desk. It would be there if I still have it. Okay. Is there yeah. anything else you could think of? Either I didn't ask you or you didn't tell me? Right. I should know. Um, I know that's a very general question. <laughs> right. Well, I, I think, again, I, I, you know, I don't want to talk about the tent or give my own opinion, but I, you know, I believe that everybody who was involved was doing what they thought was a director from our, you know, our Oh, our no, I, I understand. And, and so I don't think anybody wanted to do that. They didn't want to. I mean, the, watching this video isn't anything anybody wanted to do, yeah. you know, especially after hours, but it was a difficult yeah. video to watch, and, and I think people left just feeling. You know, so it's, it's something we were excited about. Yeah. We, did, we didn't really enjoy it. You're directed um, to do it. But we were directed to do it, and we stayed late because of the directive, and we were on, at least I was, and I think everybody else in that room was under the assumption that this was TJ acting on over from either the chief or, de or, or deputy chiefs or the mayor or whoever it might be. Okay. Um, so we were doing what we were told to do. Um, and uh, so I, I think that uh, you know, we're open to learning about better processes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, you know okay. so it's a learning experience for us. No problem. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and conclude the interview, and the time is 10.56.